Hi, this is Chris Hendren at OPT, one of the co-designers of the Triad Filter. Now the Triad Filter is a new revolutionary filter that isolates three narrow band emission lines for one-shot color cameras, allowing you to shoot one picture and capture hydrogen alpha in the red, and the oxygen and hydrogen beta lines in the blue and green channels. So without having to have multiple narrowband filters, you can actually get a narrowband image. What I'm doing today is a short, quick run through of how I process one of my images shot with the triad filter. This image was actually shot from the OPT parking lot and we had about a quarter moon coming up that started intruding on the shot later on that night. Now, this image looks fairly dark. You can see some stars on it, not much else. That is a testament to how well this filter blocks light pollution. If I go up and look at the levels function, you can see how dark the background is straight from the filter. That's because it's only letting through a little sliver of light at hydrogen alpha and another narrow band that covers the hydrogen beta and oxygen three lines. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you one way that I process this image. I am going to incorporate some features that are new to Photoshop CC with the new RAW converter, which is great because you can use it on any image, whether or not it's a DSLR RAW file. I am also going to be using one additional filter, which I personally use and recommend. It's the RC Astro Gradient Exterminator plugin. Now this is not a free filter, it is $50. So if you have another way for removing gradients from images, I would say utilize that as well. If you're using something like PixInsight or Nebulosity, they have their own gradient removal tools. So you'll wanna try that. Now, if you've seen any of my earlier videos, you see how I generally will align and stack images. These were aligned and stacked in nebulosity and then flattened down to a single image. So as I do in all my images here, you start out with a very aggressive curve to bring up the information. And even after that, you can start to see some of the nebulosity. Now I'm going a little too aggressive here, but I can ease that off slightly. Next step, go to levels. At that point, we wanna bring this up. Now we could go up to here, but now I'm losing information. So I always wanna back it off a little bit, especially on this first adjustment. You can already see the reddish hydrogen coming through very clearly. We now go to a second round of curves, this time not so aggressive. Just like that. Next step, go to levels. And then in this case, we're starting to see some gradient in the background because I was dealing with a fairly extreme amount of light pollution and full honesty here, I didn't shoot flats for this. So take the lazy way out and have to deal with more in the way of gradients. So in this case, I'm actually going to set the black point separately for each of the three channels. And what you'll see is there is a blue shift in the background slightly, as in the blue tends to hook to the right on the histogram a little bit more. This will become a little easier to see going and looking at the channels separately. Now the reason why you see more of blue here is that's the 18 nanometer band with hydrogen beta and oxygen three. So it has to be a little broader to encompass both of those wavelengths, which does let more in the way of bluish light in. But the red channel, which is isolated hydrogen, shows very high contrast. Now in this case, I'm gonna do one more curve just to get it moderately bright. And now we're starting to see some of the gradient intrude. I'm just gonna go like that. This is the point at which I'm gonna to go to the camera raw filter because when you're dealing with a Bayer matrix, especially through narrowband filter, you're going to have a fair bit of noise in the background. You're suppressing a lot of light and the emission lines kind of come in on a pixel by pixel basis. Only one out of every four pixels pick up red light and the other three quarter share the blue and green light between them. So you are going to have a fair bit of noise. Anyone who's shot monochrome narrowband images know that noise is just a fact of life when you're using such restrictive filters. So I generally push the noise reduction here to around 20, 25, and the color I will push up a little higher. Now that will actually clean up 
a lot of the noise that we see here in the background. The reason why you want to do this first is it helps to correct some small scale color blotching which can affect the usefulness of this next tool. Now I'm going to use the gradient exterminator tool. So I want to loop in just the nebula. Now I'm not being a perfectionist here. You can see that there's some faint nebula that's outside of what I'm looping on. But if I select the entire image, then I'm not doing very good for gradient removal. So in this case, I've selected this. I'm telling it this is the area I want to ignore. Select inverse and then choose a feather. I like to use about 20 pixels. This filter is a very simple layout. We have detail, fine, medium, coarse, and aggressiveness, low, medium, high. This particular layout with coarse detail and high aggressiveness is how I usually like to run it with balanced background color checked. Running this does a pretty good job of cleaning up the blue shift in the background as well as the dark lower right corner and the overly bright upper left corner. So now with this change, we can do an additional curve function. Don't want to get too crazy because we're going to blow all the stars out and then adjust levels. And from this point on, I do like to adjust them for each color channel because again, you can use that to fine tune the exact background color. In this case, I can see that green is a little too hot, so I'm going to bring this up just slightly. There's not a ton of green out there in space, even with a narrowband filter, so it's not a terrible thing to let a little bit of it go. Again, season to taste at this point. I'm making adjustments to bring out the faint structure in the hydrogen, which you can see here in the red channel. I also have green and blue which look very similar, but the blue channel brings in a little bit more of the hydrogen beta and the green channel pulls in a little bit more of the oxygen. At this point, I like to run a high pass filter at about 40 pixels, fade high pass to soft light with about 50%. That allows you to really boost contrast. As you can see here, starting from this point, boosting the contrast, it makes everything pop just that much more. The other thing I like to do is one more round of the camera raw filter, which can help remove a little bit of that residual noise in the background. And then this filter here for clarity can be very useful for bringing out structures. If you push it too far, you lose all your saturation, but boosting clarity to around 30 or so can give you a really nice result. There, as you can see, it made a nice change to the appearance. You can adjust hue and saturation if you like. I sometimes like to push my saturation just a little bit higher. And at this point, you can see that while we may not have a completely finished image, you're able to pull in a ton of structure out of an image that started out looking like this. So using the triad filter allows you to achieve results like this from a light polluted location in about magnitude four skies with a quarter moon rising and actually illuminating the scene. So that just gives you an idea of how impressive results with this filter can be. If any of you have come to visit our shop, you know we are definitely not the most rural location and you can achieve results like this under equally bright skies. Once again, this is Chris from OPT showing you how to do simple image processing with the new triad filter. Now, if you want to check out the triad filter for your own astrophotography, go to www.optcorp.com, our website. Click on the triad button and see how this filter will help improve your shooting from light polluted locations.